welcome students today from chapter 2 entire services we are going to have the last video lecture in the previous lecture we have completed these following topics which are locating sites using search engine finding people on the internet how will you find the people on the internet and those things already you computed chat, chat room, chatting, we have computed that already. Video conferencing or video teleconferencing, in short which is called BTC. And after that we have completed electronic commerce, e-commerce, then file transfer protocol downloading files and uploading files. So, these following topics already have completed in the previous lecture and today's topic which are going to have these are the one Telnet news group participating in news groups blog e site under e site topic these are the following subtopics which we are going to cover like e-learning, e-banking, e-shopping, e-reservations, e-groups. Then after that social networking and last is cloud computing. So, these are the following topics which are going to cover in today's lecture. So, dear students, let us start the today's lecture. The first one is Telnet and news groups. Network terminal protocol which is called in short Telnet. Network terminal protocol. Telnet or Tel e type network. Telnet or Tel e type network is the main network protocol used on the internet for connecting with a remote computer. So, this protocol helps a user to log on to a remote computer and function as, as if he or she is connecting directly to that computer. The user starts a session by specifying the computer to which he or she wants to connect. That is by providing the host address at the system from as shown below. So, Telnet mainly for that purpose, Telnet is the main network protocol is you know, for that if you have for using on the internet to connect in the remote mode, that means directly you can connect to the computer, which computer? The host computer or the remote computer. Here you see the telnet host address here normally the telnet session requires a valid user login and password which are given by the user. One of the connection is established anything tagged by the user is directly sent to the remote computer. The user can terminate the session by typing over the or over in the system prompt. Logo. In short, Telnet means like an example of email ID. When you when you are created and create or open an email ID, that time the server will provide you which server, the email server will provide you the ID and the password. So, when you will log in that it means you are connected directly to that particular server, email server. Like saying in any other website when you will register it, the website will provide you the login ID with the password. It means that website or the server is allowing to 
connect directly to that host computer or remote computer. Okay. So, this is the work of the telnet. After the telnet, news groups. News groups are similarly to email except that instead of sending a message to someone's mail box, you know, the message is posted on a bulletin board where anyone can read it and respond. News group is like a similar to the email only except what about that instead of sending your message you know, to someone's mail box, you know, the message is posted on the bulletin. Like for example, Gmail and all. Yeah, sorry, and the Genius, Hashtag, Times Now. That on internet you can read it. No, those are news groups. So it's a message only. It's like email, but instead of what sending a message to someone email. No, it is not sending. It is posting. Where? Yeah? As a on a bulletin board now, which you can read it and respond also. That respond means what? We can give comment also. Now. These allow a discussion to take place among several people. That means online by comment you can discuss it among the several people. A news group may have several active discussions at a time. These discussions happen in threads and groups of related articles that generally have the same subject right? Hmm, that means on the news group, online news group no, when the bulletin is received, if anybody tries to be or anybody want to participate, you can participate it through online also by replying you know, on uh, replying on the comment box now no. So, news groups is what? News groups is like email only but email is sending to another email box, there is somebody or so, someone email box will send it. Instead of that, the message you will post it on the bulletin board online. No? Okay. So, after the news group, we have news group elaborately let us see how it works. No? Okay. So let us see elaborately about the news group. So what is it? A news group is a discussion about a particular subject or thing of notes written to a central internet site and redistributed through Usenet, a worldwide network of discussion groups. So Usenet uses the network news transfer protocol NNTM. So, Usenet uses by whom? Network news transfer protocol. By that, it will be used. There are eight official categories of news groups in the Usenet directory. These are as follows. So, these are the category and this is the description how this category will work and what is the meaning of this application. So, when you see COM in the news group, no? COM means news group related to computers and computing or computer computing related that information you get in COM news group bulletin. Okay. Next is humanities, literature, art or other topics covered by the term humanities. So, when you see humanities, Bulletin, it means it will be covered about these following things, which are literature, art, or other topics. Okay, and MIC is miscellaneous topics, yeah, different uh, topics, no? Different different topics will be miscellaneous besides these uh, computer and literature, art, and other topics, no? Then news. These news groups cover issues related to news group themselves. Unless you are interested in issues of news group administration, this category will probably not interested you. However, some of the posting relate to Usenet policy issues and explanatory articles for new users. This will be 
of great interest to a new user. That means those who are like to see the news or sometimes what happen people do not want to be watch the news because of consuming time in our know. so to online also you can read the news and also that those related topics you know the issues which is related topics it will be uh, <coughs> display or publish on the uh, news bulletin blog. So, the next is RDC, RDC means the subject here is recreation including what sports about sports, hobbies and any other topic type of fun activity you know for recreation although for those purpose we will publish it on the news groups. The SCI means news group on scientific topic. So, if you want to see uh, for search the information about the and uh, about on scientific topic you can get it from the news group you uh, will we, we will see the abbreviation of SCI. The SOC means social and cultural issues get discussed in these groups. It is also useful for socializing. So for social and cultural issues and the source uh, this category is useful. And last is talk. These news groups are meant for talking about all kinds of issues especially political arguments. Yeah. So when you see the talk, no, you many times you can see the uh, live talk you know, no, in the news. Is, no. So that is the talk category you know, in the news group, mainly especially you, know, you see on the political arguments you can watch on the news. No. Okay. So these are the categories on the news group which is uh, seen. Elaborately, no? Okay. After this, let us see the next step. Next is participating in news group. How we can participate in news groups? So, participating in news group means there are two ways in which one can participate in a news group. Either by choosing only to read what others are saying, or by choosing to participate. It means what? On the news group, e side, either you can participate by reading only or you can uh, choosing to participate how by giving comment if you use outlook express then configure microsoft Outlook express to access the news group to the to express also you can participate when you access news group a new window will be open on your computer you can return to your browser by switching windows when you are done with the news groups close the news group window so online if you participate by giving comment and all and uh, live also, you will see the news channels of their uh, contact with you to participate in live event no, for talking, you know, for the live data so you can participate. Then how news group, news groups, no, it is working, no, how is news group working. Let us see, news group servers are hosted by what, various organization and institutions. Most ISP, internet service providers, no, host their own news server or rent access to one of one for their subscribers. There are also a number of companies that sell access to premium news server. News groups, they have their own server for rent access also. No? And there are a number of companies that sell access to premium news server also. So, other can buy the server and you can create your own uh, news and you know, all. Even the nowadays uh, uh, YouTube, on YouTube also you can see many news channels are there, even the work, uh, sorry, um, and the Facebook also you can see, no? So, like that you can uh, create your uh, news channel um, by <coughs> accessing the different uh, news servers and all, no? which is those are selling it. No? Every host of a newspaper, no, uh, server news, sorry, every host of a news server maintains uh, are agreements with other news servers to what synchronize regularly. In this way, news servers from a network, no, in this way, news server on the network, no, when a user post a message on news server, no, that message is sort, stored locally. The server then shares the message with the server that are connected. Read and 
from those servers to other servers. So, FD host <coughs> new server from maintain agreements with the others new servers you know, to synchronize the regularly, you know, and uh, user you know, <coughs> post a message on the new server. You now that message what will happen? It will be stored locally. After that, that the server then the share the message with the server so that are connected. Okay, that will be stored in the locally. After that, it will share with the server which you know need to be connected it and from those server to other server and so on. That is the news can be spread hmm, through the server you know, to other servers, new servers, the new servers to other servers and so on. Then next is blog. A blog is a type of website usually maintained by an individual with regular entries of news on a particular subject, a description of events, graphics or videos. In short, blog means what uh, example I will tell in a YouTube and all many times you can see the blog or not. Uh, people are sharing their daily life and all, uh, videos also. You know, some of them are um, creating a video of uh, uh, how to work on learning graphics and all, you know, events and all, different events and all, they are sharing you know, with their blogs and all. So, that is uh, called a blog, you know, is a, what uh, it is a type of website or where it will maintain the individual things regularly, regular entry you know. As, uh, like a, a blogger will be downloaded their blog. Uh, in a week once, hmm? or weekly will work and in a one block of data will upload it or they will share it. So, many people are use the blog just to for what to organize their own thoughts and all, mainly they are sharing their own thoughts and all about the their daily life, about graphics, events, even the sports, uh, about sports also, about information also. Hmm? How we work on the internet and different websites uh, for accessing you know uh, different different information you know those things also they are sharing their blog and it is a place to collect what and share things that one finds interesting an important feature of blog is the facility it provides for readers to leave their comments in an interactive format also you can leave your comment on it and authoring a blog maintaining a blog or adding an article to an existing blog is called blogging. So, what is blogging? Authoring a blog, maintaining a blog, or adding an article to an existing blog is called a blog. Okay. So, individual articles on a blog are called blog post or entries. The individual article when you publish on a blog, you know, that is called blog post or entries. The person who posts these entries is called a blogger, and the person which has Publishing their individual interest or articles, no, uh, posting on these entries, no, is called a blogger. Some common types of blog are listed below. Some which are the personal blog, which is an ongoing diary by an individual. It is the most common type of blog we can, which you can see on the YouTube channel. No? And next is uh, the blog that uses videos as a medium is called a v blog, no. Medium. Uh, whereas one that predominantly uses photographs is called a photo blog. Hmm? Photographs and all those are sharing, you know. Sharing means what how to take photos and all no? uh, photography, those who want to learn uh, for those purpose, those purpose people are sharing the videos, no, this is the angle, this angle you take for your photo, then you will better quality you get and better position. No? So, that type of blog when they are sharing that is called photo blog. And a blog that focuses on art is called an art blog or art blog. About the art, if anybody creating the blog, that is called art blog. A professional blog is a blog about one's industry and profession, but not in an official capacity for his public harping. Professional blog, Sadhya, once the industry or their profession, different professions are engineering, 
मार्केटिंग मैनेजमेंट और डिफरेंट डिफरेंट सब प्रोफेशनल जॉब्स आ गए हैं ना ऑफिशियल कैपेसिटी फॉर इस वो दिखा कंपनी ना इस मात्रा में ऑफिशियल नेक्स्ट इस कॉर्पोरेट ब्लॉक इस ब्लॉक प्लांट्स कंपनी ने ऑफिशियल कैपेसिटी जो अंडर ऑफिशियल कैपेसिटी कंपनी ने द कंपनी ऑफिशियल कैपेसिटी द ब्लॉक व्हिच इज शेयर दें इस कॉल कॉर्पोरेट ब्लॉक सम ब्लॉक्स फोकस ऑन ए पार्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट दैट इज फैशन एजुकेशन और ट्रेवल सम ब्लॉक्स आर देयर व्हिच आर फोकसिंग ओनली पर ऑन पार्टिकुलर टॉपिक लाइक दोस आर क्रिएटिंग ए फैशन ब्लॉक नॉट ओनली अबाउट द फैशन दे विल शेयर एंड दो जो आर टीचिंग प्रोफेशन है और वन एजुकेशन ना ब्लॉक दे आर मेकिंग नॉटली अबाउट द एजुकेशन है अबाउट द कंपटीशन डिटरमिनेशन फॉर दैट पर्पस आल्सो नो क्रिएटिंग द ब्लॉक दे आर अंडर एजुकेशन एंड ट्रेवलिंग यू कैन सी इन ऑन यूट्यूब ना मेनी ऑफ देम आर ट्रेवल इन डिफरेंट कंट्रीज एंड दे आर ट्रेवलिंग दे आर शेयरिंग ऑन द ब्लॉक ना दैट इज Okay, so these are the some common types of blog which are listed: personal blog, photo blog, then B blog, na, then art blog, or art blog which is called professional blog also there, corporate blog, and some sort of part focus on some particular topics or subject which is called fashion, education, travel, so on. Na, okay, these are the blog how it works. Then after the blog. Next is e-site. E-site or electronic site offer services that are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Some categories of e-sites are like like e-learning, e-banking, e-shopping, e-reservations, and e-provision. These are the examples which is given in the book. E-learning, e-banking. E shopping, e reservations, and e groups. So from there, first first one is e learning. E learning means electronically e learning. E learning means online, not through online. You can get help. How e learning refers to an education using electronic delivery methods such as CD, DVD, video conferencing, websites, and email. From different uh, e learning websites, as they are now, you can. By the CDs and DVDs also, or through the video conferencing also you can learn. Then from the website also you can get the information, you know, about your educational topic or what information you want to get it. And through email also you can get it. It is computer based and involves the use of self-contained learning material and resources that can be used at the convenience of the learner. So that means depend on the learner, you know, convenience of the learner. Which you like, that you can download it or order it. It usually incorporates some form of test, multiple choice questions that allow the learner to self-assess or research progress. And e-learning requires a higher degree of self-motivation on the learner's part, as you meet she would be studying almost entirely on his own. For example, e-learning site like eShiksha.com. Uh, then enchantlearning.com no from different uh, uh, website is any website are there no from there you can buy your things which you, uh, you are interested or that is no so mainly for higher in a degree for self motivation no so they completed but if they want to continue no um, distance and all you can buy it online. Online courses so they are distance no online also you can learn. So this e-learning is uh, helping a lot for the higher education. Or and there are some advantages also there. Okay, and uh, some benefits also there of the e-learning for the students also, even for the teachers also, which are we are go going to discuss. And the next topics let us see which are benefits and drawbacks or advantages and disadvantages. So benefits and drawbacks. Uh, first of all, benefits of e-learning to students first, no? which are it reduces the travel time and cost. So first benefit is you no need to travel it and, and reduces the cost also. No? 
the study material can be accessed conventionally at any time in any at any place. Huh? Any time you can access your study material at any place. And it promotes self-paced learning. That is, student can learn at the rate they prefer. That means whenever you like, at that time you can access and you can learn. It encourages students to take responsibility for their learning and therefore builds self-confidence. So one of the most important thing is that they, they can the students can take responsibility of their own you know, uh, of their learning and therefore their self-confidence will be I know. Next is develops computer skills in internet studies. So on e-learning is we need to know the computer that means this computer skill and the internet accessing you know, it will be for that you will be expert. You know. And benefits of e-learning to teachers of the institution what you will see. The lessons can be made more interactive by combining text with audio, video and animation. You know, like the teachers are using the slide you know, with the text, audio also, video also, even the photos and uh, they are giving the animation you know, to, uh, to be uh, attractive to the students so that the students will watch it you know, and uh, they will more interest to have uh, the online classes for attending. So, teachers can use for benefit of the students. Next is the same content is delivered to every learner, thus preventing problems caused when different teachers supply different materials on the same subject. So, same content is delivered to the different learner. No? So, what is the content you will send? It will be sent to the different learner. Thus, what will happen? The preventing problem, what problem caused when different teachers supply different material no? on the same subject. No? Same set of different means when you create your uh, uh, resource for the particular subject, you will send to the other uh, learner. No? Like same the other subject also they will send. So, from the different different uh, teachers, the students can get and they, they can compare and good one they will prepare and all. Next is um, the cost associated with infrastructure, instructor salary exercise reduced. The infrastructure also no need for online no? and the instructor salary also no need to pay. No? Uh, so, e-learning for the teachers, no? it will be good when you have a e-site or e-learning. The disadvantages or drawbacks of the e-learning to the students and the teachers and not along as well as for the teachers also there are disadvantages. Let us see that. Basic knowledge of computers is necessary to access and use course content. That means, first of all, you should know how to operate the computer and access the internet also. That we should know. That. Then only e learning will help you. And printed books can be carried anywhere, but e learning one needed to have access to a computer or a laptop. And internet connection may also be required. So, printed book you can carry it, but computer. For e learning, you no know, need to carry the computer or the laptop no? and decide that you should have the interaction also. And there is no social and cultural interaction. You might be and uh, get information about the particular topic, but there will not be any social and cultural interaction until you do uh, interact with the people. No? So, the social and cultural interaction, no, that will be lack of it. No? So, that is one of the drawback, the biggest drawback which I feel social and cultural interaction among the people, no? that is one of the topic I feel. That means it is only the virtual, no? uh, the presentation is not only the virtual learning, it should not be good, you should uh, interact with social and cultural. Next students with low motivation may be lagged them. So, you might not be have a good motivation, low motivation also might drop it for this purpose. The slow interconnection may be difficult to access the you should have a good interconnection for accessing it. And then for the teachers, what is the disadvantage? Let us see. The disadvantage of e learning to teachers of the institution no? is that the initial cost of developing the course content may be quite high. And updating the same would require further investment. So, it is not about a particular teacher, no? it is about the different, different subject for the student. No? So, all those information, if you want to store, create and store, no? 
that means you need an uh, high you know, and the course uh, content no, may be the quite high, the content will be quite high and updating the same also must be there, so other investment will be there. You know. Resource you have to be connected you know, about uh, those different subjects, it is not about only high school 6 subjects or 7 subjects are there, but e-learning means you have to be get ready for that high school, high secondary, graduation, university, competition. Um, that uh, examination, competitive examination for that purpose. That means you resource you have to collect is which will be high. So one of that, uh, one of the definitions of that uh, is um, for the teachers and the institution. Okay. So these are the benefits and drawbacks of the e-learning for the students as well as for the teachers and institutions. So after this, next is e-banking. E-banking. So Nowadays, people hardly to go to the bank for withdraw. Those area not having the ATM and all, they are going. Or those who are not using the e-banking no, through the mobile and all, they are going. So e-banking is also called online banking or internet banking. That means you need to go to the bank. For that purpose, you can use the use your mobile or computer no, for online transaction. You can buy online also. It allows customers to conduct financial transaction on a secure website, and which will transaction in uh, you do know that will be secure on the website itself. Internet banking has revolutionized, uh, sorry, has revolutionized the banking industry. Earlier, one had to approach the branch in person to withdraw or deposit money or to obtain a statement of account. Through internet banking, what will happen? Earlier, you need to go to the bank, no branch, where you need to do and deposit also. A statement also, you need to get it from the account book. No? But what happened? Through the internet banking, any inquiry or transaction can be processed online without visiting the branch, no any other banking. No? E banking can be broadly classified into the following two categories, which are transactional and non transactional. So transactional means it involves performing a financial transaction such as an account to account transfer, paying a bill, applying for a loan. So these are okay. So it is divided into we also it is classified into two categories which are transactional. Two things so you can transfer it from one account to another account, you can pay a bill also, you can apply for a loan also. And what about the non-transactional? It involves viewing bank statements. Example of e-banking sites are the State Bank of India, no? United Bank of India or Indian Bank of India or, or Indian Bank of India. No? If you want to see your statement, bank statement and all, you can see it. That is non transactional Okay. So e-banking is one of the uh, good service no? uh, through online you can pay it by the things nowadays people are paying digitally you know, through the you know, wallet you know, like phone pay, ATM, Google pay and all, you know, through that people are paying uh, or, or sending or transferring the money from one account to another account, you can buy the things also online. So types of event, let us see what are the types of event. E-banking can be categorized into the following types. So first of all, automatic teller machine, which money can be drawn from ATM machines using your debit or debit ATM cards. Already you know the ATM machine, you know, how people are drawing the money. After the ATM, next is mobile banking. Using this facility, customer can access their account and perform transaction on their mobile phone. So the mobile phone you can what you can do? You can transaction, you can do it, you can pay bill, you can buy online also. Okay. So through the mobile banking, many things you can do it. And next is telephone banking. This service helps the user perform transaction while sitting at home. That means if you are applied you know, for the telephone banking form when you will 
open your account no, in the bank. If you tick for this service, no, telephone banking, it means this service we have the user for what perform transaction while sitting at home. By sitting at home to the telephone banking, you can transfer your financial statement from one account to another account. Transition you can do it. In short, it is for transition you can do it. And next is internet banking also been doing internet banking or online banking allows banking activities like transferring fund and all no? paying bill, checking account balance also through the online uh, through the internet banking you can do this. Mobile banking through the mobile phone and internet banking you can access it you know, from the laptop or the computer. So these are the uh, types of e-banking which means in uh, electronic banking. Next is advantage and limitations of what? The advantage of e-banking is e-banking provides 24 hour services for 365 e-banking 24 hours you get 365 days you get it. Next is it helps banks reduce the cost of various transactions. Reduce the cost of various transactions. It provides a global network coverage of the service of the bank. Global network coverage means what? Anywhere you can send it. It helps reduce paperwork also. Reduce the reduce the paperwork. If you go to the bank, they will give a slip or uh, deposit and all. No? So paperwork will be reduced. It saves time also. When you go to the bank, you have to stand in the line, then you have to wait. No? So you save the time through the e banking. A consumer can easily avail services like finding the details of their account, transaction without human intervention. So you can see the see your account also, even the transaction also, even the statement also you can see it. Okay. So these are the following things which are helping. So most of the people nowadays don't know about the event in our people selling internet. Now we see the limitations of the right now. Security is one of the major issues of e banking transaction. Security. The cost of providing e banking infrastructure is very high. And security means what? Sometimes people are the fraud calling and all, no? they will ask for the OTP and all the security number, um, secret code and all. No? So, those who do not know, sometimes they are giving, no? they will block your ATM card and all, they will say, then you tell the you know, security code and all, then they will give you money. So that is one of the problem, the security issue no? for e-banking transaction. And the cost of providing e-banking infrastructure is very high. E-banking infrastructure is very high. And bank and all they are providing the service, no? uh, they have that uh, very high infrastructure established for providing this service to the consumer. So these are the advantages of e-banking and limitations of e-banking. After this, next is e-shopping. E-shopping, most of you know when I said about e-shopping, it has come to your mind I think about the Amazon.com, then the Flipkart.com, you know, so which are already here. Hmm? Flipkart.com, Samuel.com, Home Shopping.com, eBay.com. So what is e-shopping? Buying and selling of products on the internet is called e shopping or online shopping, it is called. Consumer can buy items like books or so clothes or so toys, cosmetics, household items, hardware, many things are there, etc. Many from online stores. Some examples of e shopping which are given already, which I have given, you know, flipkart.com, snapdeal.com, home shopping.com, ebay.com, amazon.com, hmm, many websites are there. Online from the online store, you can buy it by looking at the features of the product. No, you buy it through online. That is called the e-shopping. So, so e-shopping help you for what purpose? For buying and selling. You are selling the product through on the internet. No, which is called e-shopping or online shopping. So, benefit of the e-business and the customer. No. Benefit of the yeah, sorry, benefit to business and the customer. Let us see, no benefit to business. First is benefit to business. 
it is the cheapest means of doing business it allows people to do business without time or distance barrier it is ideal for products that have few buyers it reduces the number of personal requirements so the cheapest means of business you can do it for that you no need of having the big area for opening the shop and all that and there are other people to do business you know, without uh, time also you know to spend your time for morning to evening in the shop is it like no you can online product when you get the order so after looking at the order you dispatch it so it will save the time also no? and products that have few buyers no? it is an ideal no the products which are required for the few buyers so those type of products you can different Uh, you can publish it, and it reduces the number of personal requirements. So offline shopping, salesmen are there many salesmen are required, but online that personal requirement, which is the one number of the personal requirement, it really reduces. And benefit of to the customers, the first one is the benefit to the business, and the benefit to the customer is what it prevents travel time. So it will save the time if you go to the shop. and you choose the things and all what will happen instead of that you will sitting at home you will see the product after it you can order it from any year you can uh, look at the product and order it so it will save the time uh, instead of that uh, wasting the time you can do the other works and all next is it can provide a better deal on a product as the same product is available on many websites if the product you know the better deal it will be there for the product because the same product will be available on the many websites no so customer can vary the product price quality and all no they can order it okay. so this is the benefits of what e shopping business and to the customers next is e reservations e reservations and e groups e reservation means what the internet has become an easy way to complete many of our tasks from the comfort of our home or office thereby saving time and effort that means internet make us to what Easy way to complete the mini part task no? by sitting at home or from the office also. It will save our time and effort also. It allows you to reserve your seat in a train or airplane also, even book what hotel rooms, places on cinema ticket also you can buy. It. Even the doctor's appointment also you can book it. No. even nowadays even bus ticket also you can book no? so the user has to simply take a print out of the reservation ticket and so the same it is only for personal photo identification proof to avail the services you need to download that ticket and all then in the print out you can uh, show it for that one for no? identification purpose example so reservation sites app irctc.com which are using for booking or reserve the which one train ticket make my trip.com is using for train booking the train ticket also even the hotel also even the air plane also yatra.com so that also you can do it book in booking site dot com also you can use for all this part of it okay so e reservation is one of the benefit for the users to internet instead of wasting time you know you save your time by sitting at home or office and your effort also you can book what train ticket airplane hotel cinema ticket doctor's appointment even the bus ticket also you can book Okay. And next is e-groups. What is e-groups? An e-group is an easy to use email group service. E-group is here email group service. 
as a number member of an e group you can send an email or message to all the registered numbers of the group by using a single email address it means what those who are having the e group no they can send their message no an email or message where to all the registered numbers in the group you need to be registered okay you need to register the numbers no in the group you could, should create an uh, numbers no in the group you need to create that in group and you need to add the numbers and when you send the message or the email it will go to those numbers group by what using a single email address with your single email address you can send to different numbers by using the e groups okay if you want to send then particular person then individually you can send it no problem but uh, information you want to send to your uh, group might be a group of 20 people no so you can create a e group and send your information through one message to all the group members using the e group service all right so e group allow you to what to store photos also and files also and coordinate events and chat also group chat like in the whatsapp and all the group you have no? so group chatting also you can do it with online register mem mem members only like in the whatsapp no, those who are adding only would be among them only you can do the uh, group chatting and all the like same only group also many professional institute make a e group of students enrolled for a particular session which allow them to keep in touch with one another that is nowadays you see and the students group we have made no class 9 class 10 class 11 12 class 8 class 7 student group no for what purpose so we are enrolling there and then means we are adding their number for what for keep in touch you can share the information along um, that online um, video lecture classes you can get it for those purposes so e group is one of the benefit so one message only one message you need to send and all that one message will go to a big group member center okay so this is the benefit of the e groups no so after this is reservation and groups next is quite important which i feel that is social network social networking focuses on what building online communities of people who share interests and or activities these websites are used by millions of people regularly to communicate and share information Social networking sites are more popular with teenagers and young adults nowadays. No, so mainly for us are building what online communities of people who share what their interests and activities. Okay. These sites have become the place to meet people and build links more intimate than the ones brought about the chatting online, like MySpace.com, Facebook.com, Twitter.com. These are the examples for social networking. So, among this, let us see Facebook.com, okay, and Twitter, Facebook and Twitter. Facebook was founded by Mark Zuckerberg and was launched in when February 2004. A user has to register before using the website. After which, you obviously may create a personal profile also, add the users as friend also. And exchange messages also. The site also provides automatic notifications when a friend updates on his or her work profile. Additionally, users may join common user interest group organized by various workplaces, schools, or colleges. No? Where you can be a group also, even the, uh, in the work Facebook, and you know, all. Most of you already know that huh? you can create a group and you can add your friend also. Hmm? So, how do you use the Facebook? For that, you need to register, you know, and the Facebook server will provide you the user ID and password. With that, you can access it, and you can create your personal profile also, and you can add your fan also. Okay, so social networking, you have to be aware hmm, how you need to use it. There are um, benefit also, and disadvantage also, no, which I am going to discuss after this. Means after this, uh, 
introduction of Facebook and Twitter. Next is Twitter. No? Twitter is a social networking and microblogging service that allows you to communicate with your friends or followers by sending short text messages. One forty characters in length for tweets. Okay. So Twitter is all microblogging service only which you can communicate with your friends or the followers no, by sending the short text messages, which are one forty character in length, and that is called tweets. So social networking we are focusing for on building or what online communities of people for sharing the interests and activities. Eh? And our sound example is uh, Facebook. Sound example is no? Facebook and Twitter. Now benefits and how to stay safe from the social networking. Social uh, networking. You know, how we can stay safe. Benefit is they provide a good way to make connections with people of similar interest. That means how we can communicate with others. If a person is having the similar interest with the, uh, the people or the user, no, only among them only do chat. Okay, and may like uh, somebody want to be chat. Chat uh, of different uh, ideas and all uh, like uh, about uh, social or about some mathematics, about science and all. Uh, so different different of those are interested on that. Those particular people will be communicating. Making new friends and connecting with old friends has become very easy. Making new friends and connecting with old friends means uh, uh, when you complete your uh, educational life no? or student life and all after many years if you want to uh, communicate to your friends through the social networking you can find out and edit then you can communicate to your friends. So making new friends and connecting with the old friends that is one of the benefit and it is very, it is very easy also. No? This sites offer a great platform for advertisers to market their product also the services to their search also. So you can easily for uh, what advertising purpose also social network site also you can choose. Because many people are on the social networking platform now, so people can even see the advertisement, the product and all no, and service. Uh, so that also they are going to their websites you know, buying the things and all. So these are the social networking benefits. Now how to stay safe on social networking sites? There is advantage in that disadvantage also, drawbacks also. And you should know how to stay safe from the social networking. It is very dangerous. Social networking, one way it is good, another way it is very dangerous. So, you should know how to stay safe. So, the following actions can keep you safe on social networking sites. That are, or those are, do not post public, sorry, private information like mobile phone number, home address, etc., on social networking. Should not remember, should not post your private information like mobile number, home address, and all. Okay. And you can also adjust your privacy setting also on social networking site so as to control who can access your information. Okay. And you can adjust your privacy setting also is there. And you can set it out so that your privacy will be maintained. It will not be public. Right. So you should know how to stay safe the social networking. Social networking one is very good, another very dangerous. Be careful, should not share any unnecessary thing, otherwise you will be in problem under cyber crime. Okay. So after this, next okay, and next and today's last topic and the last topic of this chapter which is called cloud computing. So cloud computing most of you know, but you may not know that is cloud computing. No? That are cloud computing is a technology that uses the internet and central Linux servers to store and maintain data and applications. In short what cloud computing means 
an example I'll tell you Google Drive. Hmm? Google Drive is using for what purpose? You can um, save, you know, if you do not have the space in your mobile, then you can save your photo, video, and all in the Google Drive, which is called a cloud computing. That is the server, the Google server. There, your information they will provide you some space, some space they will allow you that in that place you can store your things. If your data are more, then in the free space they will give not much, but if you have a data more than that space, then you need to be buy that space. They will allow you to. First of all, they will give you like 20 GB to 25 GB free space they will give. If you have a data of more than that or if you want to be stored your data more than 25 GB then you need to buy the space, okay. So it allows users to for what to use application without installation and access their personal files and email computer with internet access. It allows efficient computing with the help of centralized storage memory and processing. Okay. So, you need to think for that uh, it has saved in the drive of the cloud computing server. From there, through online, you can see, you can download it whenever you require. Okay. So, an example of cloud computing is Think Free and Microsoft Office Live. It has given these two examples. Microsoft Office gives you access to entire suite of applications like word processors, PSA, presentation, publishing program available in the cloud. Okay, and think free also is providing a set of office program and all on installed on your computer. And cloud computing believe to have enormous potential and infrastructure that by 2020 most people would be able to access software application online and share access information through remote server network instead of depending on software and files on their personal system. It means what? When you will travel from one place to another, you don't need to carry your laptop or the computer, no? instead of that if you have your data on cloud computing uh, no, or in the uh, remote central remote server no, or in the cloud computing server, uh, there from there you can access it and you can share it. Okay? So this is the benefit of the cloud computing which you can access from anywhere, you know if you carry your device, the hardware device and all, all you need the internet uh, service, even for the mobile also you can do it, no? mobile you can carry it or you know, and some of them always they are carrying their laptop also, so you connect the internet to the laptop and the laptop also you can access the cloud computing, okay. So most of the people nowadays you are already know about the um, Google Drive and all, no? from there. You can many times to from the YouTube, from the uh, websites and all you are downloading, you know, they are sharing from the um, Google Drive only. When you uh, download um, mainly from the personal blog and all, you know, they are sharing the file and all, from where they are sharing. So those who have created their website, they are sharing from their website, otherwise most of them are sharing from their what? From Google Drive only. So, that is called the cloud computing, okay. So, this is the last topic from this chapter, today is the last topic of the uh, video lecture, no? We have completed following topics, which are the one? These are the topic we have completed, no? Telnet, news group, no? And then news group, many things we have completed. Participating in news group also we have completed. Now even the blog, you no, know, people are interesting in, of sharing their um, activities and all. No? The e sites, uh, under e sites, e learning we have completed, and advantages and drawbacks and disadvantages also we have seen. Uh, e banking also, so many benefits are there for e banking. No? Internet banking, mobile banking, sharing, or transaction also you can do it buying and selling also, no? e-shopping through that also you can buy and sell, no? e-reservation you can book the ticket and all, no? e-groups, 
in group to the group also you can send your message in a group one particular message in a group to different people you can send it social networking the social networking we have known about the facebook twitter and benefit of so and how you can stay safe from the social networking also we already learn cloud computing we understood that data and all if you want to store it in the cloud computing server no you can store it online from any any time you can access it if you do not carry your computer or laptop also no from online from any device means computer or from the mobile also you can get okay so this is the homework we have to do fill in the blanks you have to find out fill up in the notebook and send it to my individual whatsapp number to and from so you have to do it and fill the correct option also so this chapter has completed thank you very much we are going to have a new video lecture on the next chapter on next chapter okay good after this thank you very much